Hey everybody, this is Patrick JMT and I'm partnering with Chegg, and here we're going to talk about direction fields and Euler's method. So we'll sketch direction fields to find solution curves of differential equations, and then we'll use Euler's method to find numerical approximations to solutions of differential equations. Okay, so let's just start off with an example here. So let's consider the differential equation y prime equals x plus y minus 1. So the idea is, right, we would like to, to just know a solution, if possible, right? We, if we could just know, hey, y equals, I don't know, hopefully it, it's some function of x. It could be, or it could be even implicitly defined. But the idea is, once I know that, I can take the derivative, y prime, I can substitute in y prime, I can replace y with whatever it is, and I'll get a true statement. Now, sometimes it, we just may not have techniques to solve the differential equation, or it just maybe it's like super duper hard to do. So in that case, what do we do? Well, here's where direction fields come into it. So what is a direction field? Well, remember that the derivative, you can interpret the derivative as it being a slope of a tangent line at a point. So what we'll do is we'll just take points on our graph and compute uh, little slopes of tangent lines is what we'll do. I should say slopes of little tangent lines. So suppose, for example, I look at the origin, the point 0, 0. So if I plug in 0, 0 into my derivative, right, it says y prime would be, well, 0 plus 0 minus 1. We would get negative 1. So what we do at the origin, 0, 0, I just make a little, we'll call it a little hash mark. And the idea is the slope of that little hash mark, that's supposed to have a slope of negative 1. So it says the slope of the tangent line at that point is going to be equal to negative 1. And we could do this for, you know, more points. Suppose I move over one unit. Well, then I could plug in x equals 1, y equals 0. I would have 1 plus 0 minus 1. I would get 0. So at the point 1 comma 0, my little hash mark would have a, the, the slope of that little hash mark would be equal to 0. And I think you can see that if you plug in, for example, x equals 2 and y equals 0, we'll have a slope of positive 1, and then we'll get a slope of positive 2, and then a slope of positive 3, etc. <clears throat> so ultimately what we want to do is we want to do this for a whole bunch of points. You want to, you know, cover this entire graph with these little, these little hash marks. So obviously this is something that you do not want to do by hand. So I went and used Desmos, and I filled up my graph with these little hash marks. And the idea is you can maybe even guess some solutions, or even if you can't find an actual formula, it's still useful. You can get some, an idea about what's going on. So suppose we start, you know, I don't know, at this point. And maybe that's an initial condition. So at this point, right, that looks like the y value. We'll pretend that's negative 1, and we'll say 1, 2. So that's the y value. Uh, it looks like uh, the, the coordinate negative 1, comma 2. So maybe that's a, 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 an important point that my curve needs to go through. Just think about the little hash marks, the slopes of the tangent lines, as sort of being directions to, 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 that the curve's going go to gonna go. So it says it's going to be horizontal, but if I look over, right, it looks like the tangent line is getting steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. So it looks like my curve would look something like that, and I think it's going to go back this way as well. So that would be a solution curve. Again, using this initial condition that when x equals negative 1, y has to equal 2. Now, notice there's lots of solution curves. Notice, for example, if you look along... Um, you know, maybe I take this initial condition, I start here. Well, there it looks like the slope's negative 1, and then if I follow that, it's still negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. So I'm getting another solution curve here, and this to me looks a lot like the line y equals negative x. And notice if we go back, right, it says our differential equation, we had x plus y minus 1. Maybe I could even guess, you know, y equals negative x. Is that a solution? Well, the derivative would equal negative 1. So if I plug the derivative of negative 1 on the left, I've got x plus y. We said y was equal to negative x. Hey, it looks like I do actually get a solution in this case. So I know that the, the function y equals negative x would actually be a solution to this original differential equation. 
Typically, though, that's not what's going to happen. You're just going to get a general shape of a curve. So that's the notion of direction fields. It just kind of says it's giving you directions to, it's giving you the direction that the curve is going to bend is the idea. So from that, you can get a general idea of the shape. Okay, so what's Euler's method? So Euler's method says, okay, again, we've got some curve, we'll call it the solution curve, and we're trying to approximate y values on that curve. <clears throat> so maybe I'm trying to approximate some y value on the curve. Well, what I can do is I can take some point that my curve goes through, and what I'll do is, again, I'm just going to compute the slope of a tangent line, and I'm going to use the slope of that tangent line, and I'm going to move over a little bit, and I'm going to come up with a new y value. So the idea is that y value approximates this y value on the graph. But now I can use my direction field, and again, that's going to sort of, it's going to update the direction that the, the, this line is moving. So maybe now it says, when I compute the slope of my new tangent line, suppose my new tangent line, uh, it says the direction, the direction field tells me, hey, now you're moving up in this direction. Okay, so I'll move over a little bit. Again, I'm going to approximate uh, a y value, and I'm going to keep doing this. So I'll update the slope on the tangent line. I'll get an, uh, a new point, and then I'm going to update it again and get a new slope, and that's, gonna, again, going to change my direction. And hopefully if we do this enough times, especially if we move over small amounts, smaller and smaller amounts, so that we're constantly updating the direction um, that our that our line is moving in. Hopefully at the end of the day, the approximated value is going to be really close to the true value. That's the notion of Euler's method. You're just using the slope of a tangent line to come up with an approximate y value. We'll compute a new slope and we'll just keep doing that over and over and over. <clears throat> okay, so the idea is um, as we just said, so let's introduce some notation. So I'm at some point x sub 0 comma y sub 0 on my curve. My solution curve is still here, the one in the red. We're going to move over some distance, and this is often called the step size. And in this case, our step size is going to be equal to h. Now, we can compute the slope of the tangent line, and the slope of the tangent line, again, comes from the differential equation. So we had y prime equaled x plus y minus 1, we're going to abbreviate that as capital F of xy. So this capital F of xy is computing the slope of a tangent line. It's just computing the slope of a tangent line. So if I'm at some original point y sub 0, and I move over h units, and I know the slope of the tangent line, well, to figure out the new y value, this new y value on my tangent line, it says we take the old y value and we multiply it, or we add to that the product of the step size multiplied by the slope of the tangent line. And that's going to give you your new y value. And once I have that new y value, I could find yet another y value. And now I would use my updated information. So it says y2 would be y1 plus the step size multiplied by the slope of the new tangent line that I'm now calculating using x sub 1 comma y sub 1. And I could compute y sub 3 uh, using my, my information about y2 and x2. We'll know our x values because we're just moving over um, some fixed amount each time. So that's easy to compute. The corresponding y values will be the, the stuff that takes a little bit more work to find. Okay. So you can read here, this is uh, Euler's method, and it basically just summarizes everything we just said. So let's look at a specific example here of using Euler's method. And this is something I apologize in advance because I'm going to do it by hand. This is not something you want to do by hand, right? This is something perfectly suited for a computer, but uh, just to illustrate what's going on. So we're going to use Euler's method with a step size of 0.1 to estimate y of 0.5, where y of x is a solution of the initial value problem, y prime equals y plus xy, where uh, y of 0 equals 1. So again, this is our f of xy. Now, you certainly don't need a picture, but again, maybe we can just illustrate a little bit what's going on here. 
Okay, so it says when the x coordinate uh, is zero, the y coordinate is one. So I'm starting at this point, zero comma one. So there's zero comma one. Now, what I need to do is I need to, I'm going to move over, so my step size is going to be 0 0.1, and that's going to be specified in uh, uh, typically these questions that you're asked. They'll say use step size 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or whatever. So I'm going to move over to 0 0.1, and I'm going to approximate the y value that corresponds to 0 0.1 by, again, thinking about a slope of a tangent line. Okay, so my y sub 1 value, it says it's going to be our y sub 0 value, plus again, um, we'll multiply our step size, we'll compute the slope of the tangent line at x sub 0, y sub 0. So our y sub 0, that's going to be the original y coordinate, which is just equal to 1. Our step size is 0 0.1. And now I'm going to replace, in this case, our x sub 0 that was specified. Our x sub 0 was equal to 0, and our y sub 0 was equal to 1. Again, that's using this condition. Well, now I have to plug all of that into our formula here. So it says y is equal to 1 plus 0 times 1. And if you compute this, this is just going to be 1.1 uh, is what I'm getting. Okay, so now we're sitting at so now we're sitting at 0 0.1 comma 1.1. So now I'm up here at 1.1. And we're going to do the same thing. We would compute yet, you know, the slope of an, uh, another tangent line. We'll move move over a little bit, and that'll give us a new uh, that'll give us our x sub 2, which is going to be at 0 0.2. So I know I'm going to be at 0 0.2, but I'm trying to figure out what y sub 2 is roughly going to be equal to. And now we just keep doing this process. So it says y sub 2, that's going to be equal to our y sub 1 value, plus our step size multiplied by the slope of the tangent line. But now we're using the new x coordinate of 0 0.1 and the new y coordinate of 1.1, because again, I'm, I'm using this new information to, to update. So again, y sub 2 would be y sub 1. y sub 1 was equal to 1.1. And again, now to figure out the slope of the tangent line, again, I'm just plugging it back into this formula. So now my y value is 1.1, plus our x value, which is at 0 0.1, again, multiplied by the y value of 1.1. So when I computed this, I got this to be equal to 1.221. So now this is going to be the information. So it says when we're at 0 0.2, our corresponding y value is 1.221. So now we've got to keep doing this because eventually I need to get up to 0 0.5, right? Because that's what we're trying to estimate. So we just got to do this a bunch. So I don't know how much you want to see. Let's do one more at least. So y sub 3, that's going to be our y2 value, plus our step size multiplied by our uh, slope of our tangent line. And we get that by plugging in 0 0.2 for x and 1.221 for y. So our y sub 2 value was 1.221 plus 0 0.1 multiplied by, OK, so our y value is 1.221. Plus, okay, so again, I'm just looking at this formula, plus the x value, which was 0 0.2, multiplied by the y, of y value, which is 1.221. And I did all the arithmetic here, and I got y sub 3 to be 1.36752. So it says when we're at the x coordinate of 0 0.3, our y value will be 1.36752. Um, you can do this again. I got my y sub 4, so you can compute this. I'll let you uh, compute this. I got y sub 4 to be roughly equal to 1.54525976. So it says when we're at the x coordinate of 0 0.4, our y value is this long number. So to get our final value, our y sub 5, it says that's going to be our y sub 4 value 
plus the step size multiplied by the slope of the tangent line at 0 0.4 uh, comma 1.545259766. And again, you can compute this. I got this to be equal to 1.7616. <clears throat> three nine two six so it says when the x coordinate is at 0 0.5 it says this is going to be the the approximate value so it says y of 0 0.5 <clears throat> the 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 estimate to y of 0 0.5 is going to be this value of 1.76163926 so there's nothing um complicated about this it's just you know obviously if you're doing this by hand it's very tedious this is something perfectly suited for a computer and the good thing about a computer is you can make this step size h small here we used 0 0.1 you know if our step size was say equal to 0 0.0001 i mean now you're updating you just move over just a little bit and you're constantly updating the slope of the tangent line to figure out you know the the new y value so, okay, that's Euler's method in a nutshell. Again, it's just tying into direction fields because the direction fields give you updated information about the way that the curve is heading. So we want to keep updating uh, using that slope of that tangent line to keep coming up with better and better approximations. So nothing hard. If you're doing it by hand, be uber careful uh, because there's just a lot of note keeping to keep track of. But um, yeah, other than that, I mean, it's, it's a clever uh, technique to me because uh, there's really, again, nothing, nothing too hard about it except for the arithmetic.